Yes, Chapak, uh, Lucius, it's yours. Okay, so I guess I share my screen. Um, okay, there's a comment from Lucius. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> um, how do I share that? Good. So this um, the translation revamp uh, has a page here which summarizes um, a lot of discussions we've had on the mailing list and also uh, during Tiki Fest, etc. About uh, how to improve our system of translations. Um, uh, so either I jump right in, I think that uh, instead of jumping right in, I should first just uh, do an overview of our current system so that we have context for, I, I know that we all practically know how these things work, but this is recorded, so, you know, so other people may be interested. So currently, right now, this is a pretty standard Tiki site. And what we have is that uh, we can activate, which I already did, um, internationalization. Uh, like here, make it multilingual. Once it's multilingual, we can to have a lot of languages. We can add this uh, module here, which allows us to switch from language to language. Uh, maybe it's a bit overwhelming, so um, let's uh, multilingual, choose, restrict. Let's have something a bit simpler. We just keep English. Uh, and French and and Dutch. Was it that? No, it was Danish. I tried it for some reason. I'll explain. Okay, and that's basically how it's configured. And here is an interesting part which I will get to later. So here we have this site, and we can change the whole language of the site and this is all uh, and I chose Danish because uh, mostly it doesn't a lot of things are not translated which is useful for demonstrating so that's basically the idea and technically what happens is that uh, our templates and all those things have uh, strings which are in English and get translated from English to another language. We have things like custom translations, which we can overwrite uh, the Tiki provided translations. For those who are familiar with um, the Tiki source, it's all living in Lang and then the language code, like French, and we have language. And PHP, which has most of those translations in very simple format, English version and French. The, we even have one for English to English, which is pretty important because it's mostly uh, commented, but it allows to have a to change some labels in English without changing the templates. And if you open a template, oops, uh, if you open a template, you can see that uh, here is translated, here is 
the English text and it is between TR and slash TR and we have others which are uh, which allow parameters which I don't see here but uh, that's the general idea and um, as I said uh, if you want to improve Tiki you can uh, fix add some translation here and commit them if you just want to improve your local tiki and not touch the you can have a custom php and tiki provides an example and this here you can translate that's something that's already translated by tiki in another way and that will overwrite the the one from tiki that's uh basically where we stand now the other thing that's been mentioned is javascript has its own file because uh, well javascript is not sticky code and it seems uh, from uh, my understanding is that there is no automated way of producing this so it's pretty much people who have filled it by hand um we also have uh, ways, uh, so this is custom translation, but we have uh, ways of editing the translations online for people who do not like to touch the file system. Uh, that was custom upload, where did I, uh, was it settings? Um, yes. Mm, no, it's not. Um, so, as is sometimes the case, we have user experience issues because I admit that I just jump on the. Uh, I usually just jump on the file system. So here we can have the custom translation. We can upload translation. We can switch to. Uh, another language and uh, other languages are, uh, and that creates a custom translation and um, I don't think it works very uh, there is some bug that uh, I guess I could uh, fix um, and this creates the custom PHP file and there is a missing line here when I, I have time I fix that because it does not uh, match what we have in the example this this should be required so that it fully works so um, not perfect but we have a working system so uh, starting from that, we had uh, a number of um, issues. Uh, and first issue is that we don't have context for translations. That means that uh, if something is translated, uh, let's stop moving around. Uh, this was discussed and in uh, a lot of languages are not uh, one-on-one -on -one translation like in English um, like uh, if you have a word or if you have a noun it might be something different uh, like edit could be modified actually it's edited but uh, watch but uh, and uh, it's, if it's a noun it's another it's another word I couldn't find examples in Tiki where we have uh, a noun for edit because it's all edit buttons for actions, but you get the idea. It's also, uh, we have very simple abbreviations like D for uh, day, uh, like G in French, but nobody's going to guess that, or M, which can be the month, but uh, I mean, um, that's translated as um, if it's uh, a month like May, but uh, if it's Monday, uh, it will be another initial in another language. So it's important to have a way of, you know, changing this. 
So we tried to think about uh, a syntax which helps people, uh, which has a, a number of benefits. Uh, one of the benefits is that we don't want to slow Tiki down, so it will show up in the translation files for, tr for people doing translations, and uh, it should not show up in the so it, it needs to be simple and uh, you know not be ambigu ambiguous or too complex or too complex because otherwise we will have a lot of it will be really verbose so first there was the idea of having uh, um, underline parentheses but uh, it seems that some people use underline parentheses for you know styling or it can happen in real life text. So we added the C for context, which seems to be simple and um, uh, and not ambiguous. Um, there were other suggestions. The, the thing is that I had time to do that. So I'll show how it works. Uh, uh, I there were another suggestion, but uh, uh, Lucy answered today, but they didn't get it before. So, I, well, uh, I thought that there was a risk with this, which is that we need to automatically uh, detect that, otherwise it will show up as it is. And the simpler, the easier, because that I'm really afraid with this kind of syntax that uh, people will get it slightly wrong, but slightly wrong is still wrong when it's an automated. And like here, there was an example here, and already we showed that we can miss the C, for example, here. It's, uh, I, so, sorry, Lucy, I really prefer to keep it as uh, short as possible. Um, because uh, here the C is missing, the C might, some people might put it in uppercase or put a space between the C and the, um, and the colon, which is the standard way of writing colons in French, for example, and all those kind of stuff, which I feel we don't want to deal with. Um, well, the, so this is an overview of things that people thought we could improve and we have basically found a way of doing that which does not slow Tiki down, which uh, functions totally the same as it works now if people are not using it and we don't lose existing translations. Other topics were that it seems that we have an issue with smarty blocks, which I don't understand the issue because you have to work in right to left language uh, to get it. But I trust Bernard that there is a problem here. Um, he seems to say that we could have an alternate syntax instead of this, which we have, we could have that or that. Uh, honestly, I don't understand how anyone will figure out this because if there's an A here and the zero here, um, nobody will guess and nobody need, should need to read the documentation. That, that one could work because, you know, the zero and the one are in an order and this one is in a different order, so maybe it works. I guess that, I guess if we do that, people will understand. That's my personal opinion. If we do that, they won't figure it out. Uh, but the other thing is that uh, nobody really uh, did it yet because that takes time. And something we should discuss also is that when do we want to do that? Because uh, Tiki24 is a long-term support and these really need to be totally robust. So usually when something is dangerous, like you know, changing the whole way we do stuff. It should be done not in an LTS, but at least the one before, like Tiki 23. So that's the perfect time for slipping something that we can test and improve in Tiki 23 so that it works quite well in Tiki 24. I, and uh, I don't see anyone having done that yet. 
uh, add JavaScript translation. I mentioned that for some reason uh, the JavaScript, the ph, the language.js, we don't have a way of creating it automatically. Uh, more on that later. And also, this is some of those ways when we try to be overly clever. It looked like a good idea at the time, and uh, it just confuses a lot of people. Uh, one hint about the fact that it's confusing is that we had felt the need to document how it works on each and every language PHP file, because otherwise uh, people don't get it. It's um, the fact that we can have translate something like login, comma, uh, colon, sorry, and login without the colon and have only one translation and it will be the same. But in the end, what is translated is just login and Tiki has some clever stuff to add it back if it was there for columns, exclamation and other punctuation. But it doesn't work very well. It doesn't work for people who have uh, exclamation marks, uh, you know, in the end and in the beginning, like the Spanish and all that. And really that's um, a way of um, trying to get clever code to do the job that should be done by translators. Translators understand all that and can adapt to their own language. And we are just coders trying to imagine that every language works like English or French, and that's not really the case. So the idea was to get rid of all that without losing the current translations and uh, I didn't find time to do that, and apparently nobody else either. So maybe it will be for after TK24, unless someone's interested. So I just switch back to here to see if uh, anyone is trying to... Because I, I, I don't see the comments, so if you have something to tell me, just shout, because it's silly to just come here and check that there is a reaction. So now I'll present so now that I have presented what we... Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. On the yeah. colon thing, so is the idea to... when Because most labels have a colon at the end, like field labels and so on. So yeah. should the translated string include the colon still? Or do we need... I mean, what needs changing? Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the translation the translated string should include the colon and it should include the question mark and all that because if you don't have the question mark it's even more obvious than the colon if you don't have the question mark first of all the sentence you are trying to translate sometimes doesn't make sense you have to guess that it's a question mm -hmm. and so you have to manage that question mark because the question mark should be just like the colon, it should be part of it, because in French, if you translate, you put a space before the question mark and you put a space before the colon. And in English, you don't put it. And in other languages, I don't know, but I expect that the people who do the translation know their own language. Yeah. So that's kind of the part of, no, we shouldn't think that we can code languages. Languages are not uh, are naturally evolving things, which you know the users understand, and we don't understand other languages, and we shouldn't tell them how to normalize their own language. Okay. Yep. Um, so, it, so it stays exactly as it is. The only difference is that we will have a, a translation for login without the colon, and we have a, another line for translating login with the colon and it might be a bit annoying because um, the translation file shows translations uh, in the order in which they appear in the templates so the login colon will probably not be besides the login without the colon mm -hmm. and i just want to stress that the fact that the translations are not 
for example, in alphabetic order and that they are in the order of the templates is a good thing. It's not an issue. It really helps translators because it means that when they have a lot of sentences to translate, it's um, uh, they are together. They have context. That's another the other uh, the other uh, definition of context, knowing what we are talking about here. So at the moment. I'm just looking in the French language PhD. There are no colons or question marks in there at all. So making yes. the change would would add colons all over the place. Yes, exactly. It's easy to remove the possibility for Tiki to manage that list of uh, punctuation because we have a list of punctuation. We could just void it, and then everything works like we want it to work in the future, but we lose all the existing translations, which I think it would be really a disaster. So um, and that needs a little more time and focus. Mm. And uh, I'm not even sure it's hard to do, but uh, I just didn't have time. And I just didn't see anyone else finding time either. So, so would, you, would, you, would you put, sorry to go off on this, but it's, uh, we've talked about this. For such a long time it's um and i never got my head around it really so would you add the colons to the translations then yep right so the english string gets a new whatever on the end and then so i'm looking at one here that might do enables per group visibility of menu options nice and that's got a full stop on the end of the french translation which is not a full stop on the english Anyway, maybe that's too much detail. It's it looks that's, like a big thing. It's not a trivial change. So yeah, it's that's unlikely. just another example of of why it's confusing everybody, and we need to you know. It yeah. looked nice. It looked like we would have less work because we don't translate login without the colon and also with the colon with possibly a different translation, which might not even be a big issue because sometimes maybe. Uh, one is an action and one is a verb or blah 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 so we yeah. should yeah but uh, i can share again because we even have issues with places where it doesn't work because someone has taken a space after the colon in the translated thing maybe they did it on purpose mm -hmm. uh, to get over that uh, if you look at the uh, here, whoops, no, that's not the language one. And if you look at tech, 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 here you can see that an error occurred. There was a space afterwards, and you know it's easy to translate. And as planned, the French translator added the space. It's all correct. Mm -hmm. And that should be how it works everywhere. And it already works when people do a mistake here because, uh, yeah. And also uh, having context will allow us to not uh, do silly tricks like adding a space in the translation so that we have a different translation for the same word mm -hmm. and all that. So maybe I can just show how it works after my commit. Um, so here I have a, a demo site, and is someone talking? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. When you were sharing your screen, you switched to the main camera video. We take back the chair screen, please, so we can see your screen. Uh, okay. Yeah, I did not. He didn't ask what I should share. Yeah. Ah, better. Yeah. So, um, as I said, the idea is that in the templates, we can add some context like list wiki pages. And I added the fact that it's a title. And that's something that was existing. And here I added, I created a new string. And here I created a new string 
which has context. So in the Tiki, if you just do that currently with uh, an existing, with a current Tiki list pages, this is what we don't want to see. This is the changed one. This is the new one. And this is the new one with context. So uh, how are translations handled? Um, that's interesting to know also. I explained it here. That's not new. That's always worked like this. So first of all, we have this, but I didn't know it. So I guess some of you don't know it. So I'll explain. Um, run translation English update and apparently tell it here. And it does look in Git revision and detects whatever um, text has been changed in Tiki so that we don't lose the translations. And I have nearly that, except I need to put PHP 4. Uh, where is it? Here. So I run that, and this has changed the English version. So I reload this. And that's, and since we are very efficient, we have caching in Tiki and it works fine. Which is great because it proves that whatever we do uh, is not a past every time you look at. clear caches. So what happened? That translation changed and in English it knows that it's the same one and that one changed and in and it detected that it's the same one so we don't lose the existing translation. Those of course never existed so we still have the problem that it's ugly, but at least in English it works. And uh, in French, it also works. It also keeps the old translation, which is great. We don't lose anything we had. And the third one is uh, Dansk, the Dan Danish, which I chose because it's not translated. So they still have that issue because they don't have, uh, there was no um, Danish translation, which we could keep. But that's okay, because that's not, that's only the first part, uh, because when you, that's just a part of not losing the existing translations. And then there is translation get strings. This one regenerates language.php. So that's the, Second step, usually you just run both. I mean, I'm just doing a demo, but otherwise you don't step, you don't stop after English update. You do the get string. And get string creates all those 54 language PHPs. Uh, it tells you that you should have done translation update before, which we did. And and we remember that if I don't clear caches, nothing happens. And now the Danish people who don't have a translation still see the English translation. So it's all nice. Uh, this one, they don't have a translation. They see the translation English to English because uh, I have put it in English to English. English to English has now the translation of la 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 context in la la la, which is usually the English translation, which is we don't care about the context. But maybe later on we will have, I don't know, no, uh, yeah, probably never will be useful. And here we are. So basically, what the conclusion is that um, we can do that in our templates and 
translate whatever we like. And the next time all those uh, commands are run, which is done now and then in order to uh, get things uh, fixed, get things updated, it will just um, magically uh, keep the existing translations working all the languages and not add any work which Tiki has to do in order to uh, handle those uh, when you are looking at the site because we have caching and it's all about uh, what's in the language PHP files which well are uh, uh, which are interpreted at, the f at first, I mean. So, um, yeah, uh, that's basically what we have. So I don't know if there are, comp there are ideas about how this should be done differently or if it looks okay or if we want to discuss other things we could do or if you want me to show some stuff that I rediscovered by preparing this and we have the on-site translation and maybe people who have no idea that exists would want to have that on the recording for posterity because we have it, it works, and I think nobody uses it. Nice, it's, it's good job. Thank you, well done. Um, I was just looking at the English update command. You can leave the SCM thing and it'll auto detect it, by the way, if you're wondering in the code. Yeah, <clears throat> well, yeah, but yeah, I guess so, but, uh, well, <laughs> okay. Yeah, if there's a .git folder, then it, it knows it's git, which has it but shifted. If I know that we are, I'm running git, uh, I don't have to let it auto-detect, I can tell it. So yeah. I thought, I was, I was not focusing on that part, but yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, um, these scripts really run fine. Yeah, and they, I didn't have to touch them. <laughs> I'm quite Brendan, happy. Yeah, Brendan did them, didn't he? That's a good job. Thank you, Brendan, if you're watching this later. Um, yeah, I think it's good. Yeah.